Welcome to the assembly video for our bat candle holder. It's a spooky little creation that's going to add some much needed ambiance to your Halloween decor. And it's a pretty simple little project that, uh, well, we're actually going to be using a, this is a seven inch Luminera candle. And as you can see, it's, um, well, it's an electronic candle, but it has this little element here that gives it the illusion of a real flame. So you can leave it unattended. You don't have to worry about it. There's a timer feature. This one is seven inches tall and three and a half inches in diameter. Um, but you can use something a little bit shorter, obviously, and it doesn't have to be a Luminera. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, but anyway, let's just jump right in here. And I did a little bit of pre-prep just to kind of speed things along here. Um, this piece here, this is one of the pieces of our base. And as you can see, I've taken these panels and already put them down. Um, as many of you know, I try to, whenever possible, work flat because it makes things easier. So what we're going to do, and I've already done four of them, but we're going to put glue on these little panels and pop them right into place. So you're going to go on this section here and you want to make sure that you get it nice and centered so that you have a nice even border all the way around. Okay, so you're going to do that a total of six times and that will just kind of speed things along here. Get rid of some pieces. We just like to work methodically until uh, all the pieces are put together and our project is complete. Okay, so there you have it. Again, you're gonna repeat that four more times. I did these two and we can put this off to the side for now. Okay, another little section here that I did some pre-prep to. Uh, well, you're gonna start off with these two little gate elements. And as you can see, I've already put these elements in place and I've also actually added some bling to them. Uh, but all you want to do, and I actually ran this through my tiny dot embossing folder just to kind of jazz up the gold foil element. And you'll notice that on these pieces there are a series of little markers to help you with the placement of these so that we get them in the correct spot Okay, so use those as your guides. And you have a total of two, four, six, so we have 12 of these little elements. And there's gonna be six that point one way and six that point the other way. So make sure you grab the right one and just pop those into place using those little markers. And then if you want, obviously you can see here that I added a little bit of bling to the centers of these. And it's okay to do that now. This piece, um, when we go to put all this together, they're not really gonna get in the way or make things more difficult. Sometimes if you do have elements like this, well, not exactly like this, but it could be anything, it may not be an appropriate time to add bling before things are put together. So you just have to kind of use your best judgment as to whether or not you can add the bling before things are actually put together. In this case, it'll work out just fine. It's not going to get in the way or make the job more difficult. So I just kind of just kind of did it ahead of time just to save time in the video because you don't want to watch me do this 12 times. Okay, so there we have it. And now one little Quick little tidbit, Let's see if I can find the rest of my bling. So you can see these little rhinestones, they come on this little plastic acetate sheet and there's some, there is an adhesive backing to it, but I wouldn't trust it. Okay, so quick little tip here. Anytime you're putting rhinestones in place, try to get that goo off there because it will eventually dry out, crack, and it'll fall off. I mean, I've, I've had some that have, you know, withstood the test of time, so to speak, but more often than not, 
they do just kind of fall off because they dry out because of uh, the elements, lack of humidity, whatever it may be. Usually that's what it is. So I do recommend just putting a little drop of glue on the back of these and using that to make it more permanent. Okay, and just pop that right in the center of this little element here. Give that a press and that's that. Okay, so, and of course, since we're doing this, since I'm putting these down right now, we definitely don't want to try to put this element together right now. We want to give these rhinestones a chance to completely set before we do anything as far as assembling this element. Okay. And I've got one left here and then we can start getting into the bones of the project. The bones. Okay. All right, put this off to the side for now. Again, just make sure you have all of your little gold elements in place. Okay, that is that. And actually, we can probably bring this back here uh, because we are going to start with this guy here. Okay, actually, put that off to the side for a second. We're going to start off with something simple just to get our dimensional feet wet. And we're gonna grab this piece here. This is actually a, a little reinforcement box. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in side of the base to help us kind of keep the candle from causing this to break. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this tab here, and then a little bit of glue on this tab here. And we're essentially just making a box, okay? So you can bring this over. Let me fold that back. And just line that up with the tab. Give that a quick press. Shouldn't take long. And grab that other side. Pop it in behind. And you can actually even use your table if you want. <clears throat> I'm not overly concerned with making this thing perfect because again, it's gonna be completely hidden for the most part. Well, it will be actually, so we're not gonna see it. And this is a good little piece to practice on when it comes to building dimensional things. So get your glue on these two tabs, kind of spread them out, tack it up a little bit. It'll dry a lot quicker if you do that. Wipe your fingers off if you've got glue on them. And then fold this up. Get it lined up. And again, this could be totally off, but it's a good little piece to practice on. Get focused. Get a feel for your glue bottle. And then we just need to close it up. Just throw a little bit of glue on it. Again, I'm not gonna worry about spreading the glue out to the, well, I almost can't help it. And I just kinda have to do it. You don't really have to though, since no one's gonna see this piece. And just close this up. Press and hold, and there is our box. Yep, so this box is actually gonna go in the center of this once we actually build this structure. Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start putting this together. Okay, so uh, first thing you'll notice here is that there are two tabs on each of these sections. One is a little bit thinner, one is more triangular. We're gonna start by applying glue to the smaller tab Okay, just go easy on the glue here. It's a pretty small piece, and we do want to try to get that glue out to the very edge of this piece here. Be careful not to get that glue over onto the face of this. Okay, just pull that back and tuck that behind the neighboring section, and just give that a quick press. And I think I'm just gonna do these tabs first. So continue on to the next one, same tab. Get your glue on there, and I'm just kinda hitting it with my finger instead of spreading it. 
line that up as accurately as you can. Give it a press. And there we go. Should go pretty darn quick. Okay, next one. Just do some dots and then you can use your finger to spread it out. Get it nice and tacky, thin it out, and it'll dry in no time. Okay, and there we go. Give that a press. Just like that. And there we go. And moving right along. Just kind of going clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever makes the most sense to you. There's no right or wrong at this point. Okay, and tuck that under. Get it nice and lined up and press. Got a couple more here. <clears throat> Same thing. Give that a quick press. And pop that into place. And that just leaves one more here. Now you gotta be careful here. Can't really move that one too much. Luckily, this is still pretty flexible. And last skinny tab. There we go. Tuck that behind. Get it lined up. Make sure you got the angle correct. And give that a press. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we can move on to the smaller little tab here this little triangular one. If you want, you can move this out of the way to make way for your bottle. There you go. And just hit that with a little bit of glue. If you want to dab it. And just make sure that this is lined up correctly. This is basically straight up and down. This one's at an angle, but this one is straight up and down. That is going to make the bottom of our base. Okay. And bring that back, apply your glue to the next small triangular tab, put way too much on there. There we go. <clears throat> Tuck that behind, line it up, and just give that a quick press. Shouldn't take long at all. And I have some um, I have some bling on a, on a roll here that I've cut. I'm actually going to apply this with some hot glue to the very bottom just to kind of bling it out even more. So I've done that on a few projects before. So take a look at the final photo of this project to kind of see what other little embellishments I added to finish this thing up. Okay, I'm getting there. Got a couple more here, maybe three more. Pull that back. And a little bit of glue there. Just kind of hit it with your finger. And there we go. Excellent. Two more to go here. There we go. Okay, and we've got one last one here. <clears throat> and you can see it's going pretty quick. Things are drying and setting pretty rapidly because we're using minimal amounts of glue here. A little goes a long way. Okay, so I've got glue on that last little triangular tab. I'm gonna line that up and give that a squeeze. And there we have it. Okay, so our structure is almost done here. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so we can take these tabs here, we're gonna fold them down, and we're gonna find this piece, okay? And 
you can see that there are some markers on here and that's to help us with the placement of this box. Okay. And you can see which way it's going to go. It's not going to go this way. That's way too tall. It's going to sit like this. Okay. We're not doing that just yet. I just want to show you and point that out. So we're going to put the bottom on and to do that, we're going to start by anchoring it to just one of these tabs. So go ahead and put glue on one tab. I'll put a little thin line there right along the very edge and just spread that glue out nicely all the way out to the edges. Clean off any excess that may have spilled over onto that side there. And you simply want to make sure that you get that nice and aligned and nice and centered with that first initial tab. Kind of use your finger to feel and make sure that it is in fact nice and centered and lined up. Okay, that looks like it's good. It's got a good hold. I can flip this down and press down from the inside to really get that into place and lock it in. <clears throat> okay. So that looks nice and crisp, nice and aligned. And at this point, we're going to close this up. So let's get our glue on the remaining tabs here. I'm doing a little, a little pigtail curly Q thing here just to cover the bulk of the tab. And then I'll do one thin line along the very edge and I'm going to spread that out nice and thin. So everything looks nice and seamless. Okay. And just give that a nice spread out to the very edge. There we go. And it's might help to put it down. It's kind of a kind of a what's the word? It's not a very stable piece right now. Okay, so take the bottom and bring it down and focus on aligning it with the side opposite of the side that is already anchored, which is this side. So we want to focus on this side here, make sure that it's nice and aligned. And then if you need to kind of nudge these walls in a little bit to get them more accurately aligned with this bottom, you can go ahead and do so. And don't worry too much if you run out of time and the glue is not completely or it's dried up and it's not holding very well. You can always fix that, but do your best to try to get as much of this in place during this attempt. Okay. I'm just kind of putting my fingers in my hand, spreading it out as much as I can to apply as, as much downward force as I can over as large of an area as I possibly can. It doesn't always work. This one might though. We'll see. See how it goes. Okay. Let's take a look at our bottom and wouldn't you know it? Yeah, pretty good. There's one little area there that's got a tiny, tiny little gap, but if I press that down right now, it may grab it and it did. So we're good. Okay. So at this point, what we can do is we can put our little box in here. Okay. And you can, you should be, you should still be able to see the little markers in here. I'm going to just draw them in with a Sharpie so you can see them because uh, they're not very visible on camera and I don't have a tiny little camera to put in here, but there you go. You can see the little markers there. And all we're going to do is just put some glue on the bottom of this box. You want to put it on the broad side, the larger side, not the thinner side, and just pop that right in using the little markers there. So again, when we put this candle, cause this candle is kind of heavy when we put it on there, it'll help distribute the weight so that this piece that we're about to assemble next doesn't get crushed cause that's going to sit nice and flat on there. Okay. So we'll let that actually, you can put the candle on there just to kind of help, uh, just to kind of help let it settle. And we'll focus on working on this piece next. Okay. So, uh, again, this is kind of a secondary platform for our candle. And all we need to do is you'll notice that there are a series of little triangular tabs 
and it's just one tab. Well, it's two tabs per section that we need to glue down. So throw some glue on the first triangular tab and go ahead and close that up. Connect it to the next side here and press and hold. Okay, and again, you can make quick work of this if you minimize the amount of glue that you're throwing on here. The thicker it is, the longer it's gonna take for that air to get in there and dry it out. It's basically going through some sort of uh, oxidation process. Anytime there's a, a chemical reaction because of something being exposed to air, I believe that's essentially an oxidation. I'm not a biology major, but that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Okay, so just moving right along, see how quickly this is going. And it may not be <clears throat> completely 100% set, but by the time I get all the way around, it'll be pretty, pretty darn, darn sturdy. Okay, and grab that next side there, get it lined up and just press and hold. Okay. There we go. A couple more to go. And then we're gonna close this one up just like we did the base. Luckily this time, this one already has the base or the, I guess you call it the bottom. It's already anchored. So we don't need to worry about gluing it twice and getting it aligned because it's already aligned for us. So that will make easy work of this process. Okay, there we go. And that just leaves one more little triangular tab right in here, right in this little nook. Okay, and if you can't get your finger in there without disrupting things and you wanna spread that glue out, grab a scrap piece of paper and just kinda of use it as a brush. Brush that, uh, brush that glue into place. Okay, and if it helps, you can push that back while you're holding this down. Just make sure that you've got the alignment correct and just press and hold that in place. Okay, and there you have it. All right, so now, just like we did with the initial base structure, we're gonna get our glue on these tabs. So we'll cover the bulk of the tabs here and then do one nice thin line out to the edge because that's really the most aesthetically important part that we are gluing down. We want everything to look nice and crisp. Okay, so I'm gonna spread that glue out to the very edges. I'm gonna kind of hurry up here. That's good, all right. And focus on, again, aligning it with the side opposite of the side that's already hinged. So focus on this section here, make sure it's nice and centered. There you go. You can even get your finger under there to help that tab make more contact. If you need to push the little walls inward, you can certainly do that. You want it to be nice and lined up with the very edge of this little piece that we're working with. And then continue to kind of run your finger along the perimeter, making sure that everything's making good contact. This is actually gonna be the bottom. So people aren't really gonna see this, but we still wanna, still wanna do our best work, kind of leading up to some areas where we're gonna to have to be pretty precise. There we go, that looks great. Okay, and that, because this was already joined, that looks nice and crisp. So that's ready to go. Okay, so we can take our base and bring it back here. And then you can see here, when we put this on, this guy here is gonna to be touching this. So that's gonna add that extra stability. Okay, and we do need to, we're gonna glue this on and we wanna make sure that we get it nice and centered. Okay, so I'm gonna take my glue and let me make sure that I'm not missing a step here. No, we're good. Get your glue all around this section here, and then I'm gonna go a little bit heavier around the perimeter. Okay, because we're kind of like joining two 
sections together without any sort of mechanism to join them other than glue. So we want to just make sure that it's got plenty of glue to get a nice grip all the way around the perimeter here. Okay, and again, pop this on, just make sure that it's nice and centered on this piece and that the border is equal all the way around. Just use your eyes. And there you go. Okay, if you get a little bit of glue that's shot out, what are you gonna do? Take your candle and pop it on there to kind of help it stay in place. And that looks great. Okay. So next section here is our little our little gate or a little fence. And that's gonna go around the perimeter of this section that we just put into place. Okay, and we're gonna have to uh, well this is gonna be not tricky, but there's a, a method to this. And I'll explain that here in just a second. So what we want to do is we're going to glue this section first, the section that has a little tab. We're going to glue that down first. You don't want to put glue on, well, actually, let me see here. <clears throat> yeah, we do want to put glue on this, actually. Because if you look here, there's a little section cut out here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to put glue. Let me see how far up we can go here. Hold on. Let me take a look. Okay. So we can put glue, and actually, yeah. So we're gonna put glue all the way at the very base of this, like so, and then you can go up a little bit here. Okay, just like that. And just pop that right into place, like so. There we go. Just like that. And just make sure that this little, short little tab here the fold, I'll show you here, this little fold here, make sure that lines up with the corner, okay? It should sit, it should fit this pretty perfectly, actually. It should be pretty dead on, actually, okay? So now, I can fold this back, and we're gonna do the same thing here. Just throw a little bit of glue right on the bottom. Watch out for these little cutout areas and then maybe just a little bit right there. And then bring this over. Make sure that it's nice and flush with this red part here of our base. Okay. And hold that in place. And then that part will be glued there eventually, not just yet. We've got one thing that we have to do before we finish this off, okay? So leave that like so. <clears throat> now we're gonna grab this section here, and this section here is gonna get glued to this side, but part of it is actually gonna get glued to this small little tab area here. So what we need to do is same thing, we're gonna put glue right at the very bottom of this and then maybe a little bit up here, but then we're also going to put some glue on this tab, okay? Just like that. And we can take this piece. First thing we want to do is line it up with the tab from the previous part of our little fence. So just make sure that that all lines up nicely. And then, again, making sure that it's lining up with the little corner here. Get that in place. And just press that all together. Right at the bottom there. There we go. Okay. Now, I would probably, if I was not on camera, be a little bit more patient here with this and give it a second to fully set before I moved on. But now you can move on to this next section. And again, same thing, just throw a little bit of glue right at the bottom of that. Fold it over, line it up, make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom of this, this piece here. And press that into place. And before you know it, yeah, looking good. It's working perfectly. Okay, so we can peel this back now and get our glue on the bottom of this guy here. Went a little bit too high there. 
And then we're going to throw a little bit on that little shorty tab there. Bring that over. Press that into place. Make sure, again, it's nice and flush with this element at the bottom. And then get that little shorty tab over there too. Make sure that's sticking nicely to our little turquoise base. And then we'll just close it up with the last piece from the previous fencing elements. And don't forget to put a little bit of glue on this little shorty here. Fold that over, should match up and line up perfectly. Again, making sure that it's nice and flush with the main base here. And there we go. Okay, so there you have that. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to put together is the little sleeve for the candle. Okay, now one little thing that I did here is I actually embossed this, but I didn't emboss the tabs. So let me show you how I accomplished that. Um, now, this isn't the same folder that I used. I've got a couple different spiderweb embossing folders, but I literally just figured out which side I could put this on where the tabs are kind of dangling off the side. So they're not actually being embossed. And then I just closed that up and ran it through the machine. Now, this is typically how you would emboss you know, the front of a card without doing the back of a card anyway. You put the card face in there, and then the back part would just hang underneath. And, you know, so this isn't anything new, but if you want to emboss this piece, you can certainly do so by just taking the tabs and not including them inside of the embossing. It's very simple, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna connect all, th uh, there's, three, there's three of these. So we got six sides, and we're just gonna connect these together using the tabs here. So go ahead and just grab one, doesn't matter which one. Throw a little bit of glue on the tab. And spread that glue out so that it looks nice and clean. Line that up. And just give that a press. I'm gonna fold that over onto itself. And you can see that when I do that, these tabs here, this one and this one, they sit on top of each other perfectly. And this side is nice and flush. That's a good indicator that you've got this lined up exactly and precisely. Okay, so there's two sides together. I'm gonna grab this one, throw a little bit of glue on the tab. There we go. And just tuck that under. And there we go. And press that down. And fold it over onto itself. Check your tabs, those look good. This side looks nice and aligned. And if it's not, you can kind of just give it a nudge. Just kind of pull it in the direction that it needs to go so that it is perfectly aligned, okay? And now we're just gonna take this final tab here and close this shape up. Okay, let me get that glue out to the edges. There we go. And I'm doing this flat, literally just putting that other side directly onto the tab. And I'll fold it over onto itself and check my work here, check my alignment. Looks like this side was a little bit off, so I just literally just kind of grabbed it with my thumb and pushed it up into place. And there we have it. I've got a little bit of an area here that is coming apart, and that may be due to the fact that it was embossed. So I just take my scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue on there, and just kind of paint some extra glue into that little area that's not holding on tight for me here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the main structure of this is together. Now we're gonna take these tabs, fold them down, and we're gonna find this piece, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna anchor this piece to one of the tabs, very similar to what we did with our base. 
So we'll get some glue on there, spread that out. Uh, this piece, yeah, this is gonna be pretty visible here, so we wanna do a good job with this. And get that nice and centered, nice and aligned, like so. There we go. Okay. You can put that down on your surface and press down like that if you want to. Get that in place. And now we just need to close it up. I'm doing my little curly cue, and then we'll do a nice thin little line there along the edge. We're gonna paint that glue all the way out to the edge. There we go. Way too much glue there. It's okay though. We'll just pull some of it off, or spread it around more on the on that tab. Whatever you need to do. There we go. That ought to do it. All right. So now, when we close this little lid, you want to make sure that again. Uh, you're focusing on getting it aligned with the side opposite of the side that it's that it's currently hinged on. So it's this side here. Get that nice and centered. And when you do that, majority of the time, this thing will just kind of fall into place. And if you need to, kind of squeeze this out, bring the wall out a little bit. Well, you can certainly get your hand in there to do that. But I think that looks good. And just run your fingers along the perimeter here. Make sure everything's making good contact, and then you can push down from the inside and get the rest of those tabs to, to grab. Okay. All right, and there you have it. Okay, so we've got a cool little sleeve that's going to go in there. We're not ready to put that in there just yet uh, because we need to add our bats, which is essentially <coughs> the last little element. And well, let's work on his cute little body first and then we'll do the wings. Okay, so it's uh, there's two bats on this. Essentially, there's two sides. Okay, so we've got these elements here for the main body of our bat. And it's literally just two layers for his body. Okay, so we're going to get started here with our bat. And as you can see here with this one, I took the... Uh, took his little feathers here, his little, I don't know, I don't, I don't raise bats or chickens, forget what it's called. Uh, anyway, well, let's go, let's do this one real quick. So we're going to take these and pull them out a little bit, and then with a little dowel, just take and just curl them out. Just fluff, I guess it's just fluff. It's a, little, uh, it's a little fur. I'm sure there's a proper term for it. And I'm literally just taking it and pressing it up against my dowel here and then curling it up just to give it a little bit of added dimension. Just like that. Okay. So, and then we can just take this and let me clean off my nozzle here. I'm going to glue this to the little shadow layer here. And our bat's body will pretty much be complete. Try to get some glue on his little feet there and then work some of that glue out to the very edge of his furry little body. A little bit on the ears and then just a little bit on the center. You don't need to put any glue on those little areas that we just fluffed up because obviously they're not making any contact with the layer behind it. Okay, so line that up nicely, just like that, and there you go. Okay, that's our bat's body. We're, once we get the actual wings and the rest of his body in place, we're going to take some foam squares and just kind of foam dot them onto the wings. So we'll do the same thing on this side here. Try to get that glue in as many little places as you can. 
Don't obsess over getting it on every single little inch here. Tiny little bit of glue goes a long way. And get some on his butt there. Okay. And just pop that right into place. There we go. I've got a little bit of glue that popped out from in between his ears. And there you have it. <clears throat> okay. So again, these will we'll use these in just a second. But first, I need to work on the wings. So here's how this is going to work. You can see that I've already pre-folded this. Okay. And pre-folded, you'll notice that there's a little dash here. Okay. And also here, that is an indicator as to where we're going to apply glue. You don't need to apply any glue to this last section here. We're going to actually glue this to the other side or the other set of um, wings once everything's said and done. Um, but again, first thing we're going to do is actually glue this entire section onto one of the sides. And it's going to be nice and flush with the top of this little sleeve. Okay, so it's going to go on like so. So let's do that first. Let's get him anchored. Let's not get him angered. Let's get him anchored. I remember one time <clears throat> I actually woke up to a bat flying in circles above, well, in my bedroom actually. <clears throat> Freaked me out. <laughs> I was worried I had rabies for like four days. Uh, I decided that since, uh, since I wasn't foaming at the mouth or feeling any more crazy than I usually do, then I was okay. And I let it go. And I think that was some kind of an omen. Okay, so again, we're gonna put just that first part on there. Make sure that these areas here where we've got um, score marks for the folds match up with the fold there on the actual sleeve. You can put that down flat and give that a press if you want, okay? And then you can fold this back over. And now remember that little line there. So we're going to take this, we're going to take some glue, and we're going to apply the glue to this section. Again, making sure that we keep the glue below that line. And if you want, you can actually throw a little bit of glue right up here, up to the very edge of this, so that it stays nice and put. Okay, and you can actually put that down flat as well and give that a press. Okay, there we go. Just like that. And then we can peel this side back and apply our glue. Keep that glue beneath that line. And then again, if you want, you can throw a little bit of glue right up to the very edge there and fold that over. You might want to kind of pull on it a little bit just to make sure that this, this little crease here is in fact lining up with the crease on the sleeve. And then you can press that down from the inside. <clears throat> okay, and again, this last section of wings here, we don't need to worry about that because we're going to do the same thing with this. And then these two sections here are actually going to get glued together to make it all nice and seamless and continuous. Okay. So half of the bat is in place here. So we're going to do the same thing again, starting with the center of his body. Just to get your glue on the center here. Work a little bit out to his feet. Go up here like so. There we go. And you just want to make sure that this part here is nice and flush with the top of the sleeve again, and that the, the, the folds there where the score marks are line up with the actual box. And then before we do anything else, actually, well, oh, hold on a second. I'm going to make sure that this stays put first. Kind of jumping the gun here. Press that into place again, making sure that it's nice and aligned. Nice and flush with the top of that box. I'm going to put this down flat. Give that a good press because it's embossed. And sometimes when you're 
trying to glue things to embossed paper, it is a little more difficult, but, and you can see how nicely those all match up there. Okay, so just like we did the first time, we'll fold the wings over and apply our glue to the second section. Keep that glue below that little score mark there, that horizontal one, and then we can throw a little bit of glue right there. Fold that over, and it helps to kind of bring that back a bit so that it sits nice and flush. And just press, get that in place, like so. And we'll go over to this side, get our glue and on section two, keep that glue below the line. And up here, fold that over. There we go. Awesome. Pretty easy, actually. And then to finish it off, make sure it's, make sure it's holding on. Finish it off, we'll peel this back and can just apply glue to one of these sides. You don't need to do both since they're gonna be kind of sandwiched. Just like that, get your glue on there, then fold it over, line it up with the other piece, make sure it's all nice and aligned. There we have it. What a cool little piece, huh? Kudos to our art director, Ron, for this awesome design. I love how the bat kind of comes together and is all seamless like that. It's really cool. Okay, line that up with the other one, and there we have it. Okay, now that looks cool on its own, but we do have some panels that are gonna go over this to give our bat, um, well, just to make it look even cooler. And let's find these pieces here, because that's really all that's left to do. Okay, now this piece here, and you should have two of each, Okay, this piece actually is going to go right here, and that's for the main part of his body. Okay, so we can take that. There are some folds here on the sides, so don't forget to don't forget to fold those. It's a pretty thin paper here, so I don't need a lot of glue. Kind of spread that glue out a little bit, <clears throat> and there are some little markers here on the front where these two little points should match up and line up like so. There we go. Just like that, there we go. And just press that into place. Okay, and we can do the other side. Might as well just stick with, stick with pieces that are similar. And this is like almost like a, almost like the fibers of the paper are really rough and not broken up a lot, but it's okay. It's, it's a nice little pattern. Okay, so just get that lined up with the little markers there. Press that into place. Make sure that these little areas where you've got the score marks, make sure that those are lining up with the little fold here. And there we go. Okay, so that's the first section in place. <clears throat> and now, let's see here, let's go on to the next section here. And that would be, let's find this there. Okay, look for, look for the piece that has a tiny little score mark right there. Okay, it's just a tiny little score mark there, and that's literally the only little score mark right there on the very tip. And that's gonna go here, and the rest of it's gonna go like that, okay? So you'll have a total of four of these, and they're gonna vary a little bit because one of them's gonna be mirrored, because it has to be on the other side, okay? So let's get this in place. We gotta match it up 
with this little marker here. And then there's a little marker down towards the tip down here. Okay, just press that into place. And I may need to paint a little bit of glue on that tiny little, tiny little section that is folded because I maybe didn't get enough in there. So I just throw a little bit on my scrap piece of paper and just paint it right underneath there on the back side of this pattern and just press that down into place. And there we have it. Oops. There we go. Okay, and that just leaves one more on this side. And it's gonna look like this. Okay, I'm gonna fold that inward. And that's gonna go right here, like so. Okay, so let's get our glue on this piece. I'm gonna try to thin this out a little bit. This paper is really, it might warp a little bit if I put too much glue on it. So I wanna to try to be careful. And again, lining it up with that little marker there and then making sure that I'm getting it right into the fold and then it should match up with the remaining marker there at the bottom. And it does. So there's that. You can see the look that we're getting now. Looks really cool. Okay, so let's move on over to this side here. And again, we need to find another one that has that tiny little, that tiny little fold. And I think it's this one here. Let's see. Yep, that's the guy. And there's our little fold. I got glitter all over my fingers now. That comes with the territory. Okay, make sure you get some glue on that tiny little piece there because last time I didn't and it didn't sit very pretty for me. Okay. So let's line that up. First and foremost with that little tiny triangle, triangular, <laughs> triangular marker. There we go. That worked out a lot better. I had a little bit more glue on it that time. Okay. There we go. And find the find the last one here. It's going to be nope. This guy here. We're going to fold him in. And this guy's going to go like this. Like that. There we go. Okay. Apply your glue pretty much done here. It's the last little section. It's going to be a really cool little piece. I'm sure I was actually thinking about probably having to make another one of these. I think it would look good on both sides of the Halloween table. There we go. And pop that right into place. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so that is what one side is going to look like. And you can see how cool that looks. And then finally, I'm gonna repeat that same process on the other side. But before we do, I kinda wanna just see what this is gonna look like all done up. We'll take one of our little bats here, we'll flip it around, and I'm gonna throw some foam squares on them. We'll do one here. And then one near his butt. I think that should be plenty. And just peel that off. And get that lined up. Just line up his feet and his little butt down there. Make sure that sitting right on top of it. Nice and centered. And there we go. Voila. Okay, so there's our, that looks really cool actually. Really cool. Okay, so anyway, just need to finish up putting our little, uh, our little panels for his wings in place. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. I'm just kind of grabbing whatever at this point and getting it in place. And uh, I'll show you here a couple more things before 
we wrap things up. Okay. Kind of using those markers as a guide. Making sure everything's nice and centered. Grab this one here and get him in place. That's going to go there. And two more little pieces. Wrap it up. I think uh, it's best that we usually I like to work flat when possible, but because everything's so angular and requires that you know we get things placed with actual folds as a kind of a hurdle. No, I mean, it's not impossible, but I think it's just easier to do this while the structure is put together. So this is one of those, it's one of those rare instances where I'm not putting panels down while everything's flat, and that's okay. All right, so we've got a couple more little pieces here. And this one, Oh, yeah, this is the one with the little tiny fold. Just have to figure out. Yeah, so our fold should be here. There it is. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes with certain papers where your little folds are. Okay, so last little piece. And there is my little fold. Let's get some glue on here. Finish this off. We'll put our little bat body in place. And again, I'll just go over a couple more things that I did off camera that are optional. I typically, if things are optional, I, I really don't, don't put them on video just because I'm not sure if you guys are going to do these things and you don't want to waste your time. And there it is. Last piece in place. Looks good. And that little, little triangular piece, you just got to give it a little extra love and make sure that it sits nice and flush. Okay, grab your bat body. And we're going to throw a little foam right on his head. One more for his little butt. Like that. Peel that off. And again, just make sure that you get that nice and lined up with the existing shadow portion there. Nice and centered. Press that down. And you see what I did here. I'm gonna peel this off real quick. Just wanna point something out. Luckily, with foam squares, you've got, uh, well, it's forgiving. You can peel it off. This thing this needs to go a little bit lower. I had it a little bit too high. Okay, so learn from me. Bring it down a little more. Put it more on his body because it kind of shows through. If you don't, you can see on the back here, you can see the little foam square. So don't do that. Don't goof up like I did. Okay, just kind of keep that, keep that a little bit lower. And now there you go. You can see that now it's hidden. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Okay, so that's that. And then finally, you can just take that if you want. I mean, I would probably glue this down to the main structure here. So just take a take a little bit of glue. And actually, in this case, I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the glue because again, we're taking two two pieces of paper that aren't really joined by anything and joining them with glue only. So I'm going to make sure I get plenty of glue on there like so. And just pop that right into the center of the main structure here. Make sure that you've got it nice and centered with a nice even border all the way around, nice and lined up. And there you have it. 
pop our candle in there. Should fit nice and snug. Oh, let's turn it on. That'll be more fun. And there you go. Okay, and there is our final product. Wonderful. And as you can see here, let me take this out real quick so I can show you. I added my little bling on a roll, did some little um, gold pearls there, and then some little turquoise rhinestones right up here just to kind of finish it off. And that will do it. So anyway, this is gonna be a great little piece for, uh, well, pretty much any room that you're decorating for Halloween. I think this will work well in my dining room, uh, maybe on the mantle even. But either way, hope you enjoyed the process. If you did, please take a moment and head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be free, paid, or one of our um, awesome tutorial videos. And if you make this or anything from our new Halloween bundle, I would love to see it. And so would the rest of our 23,000 plus dreamers that are part of the Dreaming Tree group. So head over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this address here directly and it'll take you right there. So anyway, I had fun doing this one. Hope you did too. And I look forward to crafting with you again.